Good morning and welcome to the house of the Lord. Buenos días y bienvenidos a la casa del Señor. Let's all stand and worship the Lord together. Levantarse todos de pie y adoremos al Señor juntos. Now you may, have had a, you may have had a difficult week. Es posible que haya tenido una semana difícil. But one day, pero un día, when we all get to heaven, cuando estemos en gloria, what a day of rejoicing that will be in presencia de nuestra Redentor. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. A una voz la historia, diremos del gran vencedor. Sing with me this morning. Canten conmigo. When we all get to heaven. What is your life? ¿Qué es vuestra 
vida. For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Ciertamente es neblina que se aparece por un poco de tiempo y luego se desvanece. Aren't you glad that soon and very soon we're going to see the King? No estás contento de que pronto el Rey vendrá y veremos a Jesús? Sing with me this morning. Cante conmigo. Soon and very soon.
Bible says, la, la Biblia dice, John 15 and 5, Juan 15, 15. No longer do I call you servants. Ya no os, ya no os llamaré siervos. For the servant does not know what his master is doing. Porque el siervo no sabe lo que hace su señor. But I have called you friends. Pero os he llamado amigos. For all that I've heard from my father, I've made known to you. Porque todas las cosas que oí de mi padre, os le ha dado a conocer. Aren't you thankful today to be a friend of God? Estás agradecido hoy por ser un amigo de Dios hoy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing with me today. I am a friend of God. Think about these words. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call. ¿Quién soy yo para quien en mí tú pienses?
Anybody here have any friends? Oh, there's no friend like Jesus, though. Oh, my goodness. Someone say, God help our pastor. Oh, I need help right now. Bless him. Bless him. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Pablo, yo creo que yo necesito su ayuda, por favor. Sí, aquí, por favor. Ayúdame, por favor. Brian, I'm going to do something brave and ask your dad to help me sing something. Dígale en español, por favor.
We are honored today. Hoy nos sentimos honrados to have with us a national bishop of the nation of Zambia. Hoy nos sentimos honrados de tener con nosotros al obispo nacional de la nación de Zambia. Bishop Kanjuye, el obispo Kanjuye y and his amig and his friends, I'm getting my English and Spanish mixed up. <laughs> and his friends, he says, amigos, la familia Carpenter. La familia Carpenter, I mean, uh, Carpenter family, would you stand? We want to welcome you. Thank you, Jesus. And we want to make the bishop welcome this morning. Hagamos que se sienta bienvenido esta mañana al obispo. Let's get a bishop to cheer this morning. circumstances beyond control. I want to thank God this morning who has given me the opportunity to come and worship and fellowship and rejoice together with you in this place. Yeah. I also want to salute the pastor, the man of God and his family for giving me this rare opportunity to stand before you. For I know but standing in the pulpit is a hard job. <laughs> Hallelujah. I also just want to welcome all of you who have come today and that God has sent to this place. Hallelujah. I'm feeling at home. Amen. As you have already known my name, I'm Bishop Alfred Kajuye. I'm the National Bishop of Zambia as well as Angola in Africa, a minister of the Church of God of Prophets. So my standing in here, since this is Church of God of Prophets, I'm not a stranger. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am not a stranger. I may, I may look strange, <laughs> but I am not a stranger. Because we are, we are one family the Church of God of Prophecy, Amen. with our co-founders, A.J. Tomlinson, M.A. Tomlinson, Bill D. Murray, Fred S. Fisher, Rand Howard, and Sam Clements. And today, in the next few days, we, we have Bishop Cotter. Amen. So Bishop Cotter is my bishop, is your bishop. So we are the same, we are the Church of God of Prophets. And if we are not just the Church of God of Prophets, we are still the children of God. Amen. In John 1 verse 12, the scriptures say, As many as received him, to them gave we power to be the children of God. Amen. So we are all children of God. As we were praying and singing here, 
I'm feeling the presence of God and it is overflowing. Hallelujah. I'll speak the word of God for a while, then thereafter, I'll speak some few things that we are doing in Zambia. Hallelujah. So, the word of God that I have this morning is one simple scripture which we always read. From the book of John chapter 4. John chapter 4. I heard you as also interpreting in uh, this Spanish? Yes, sir. Do you need one? Uh, we'll be okay. Thank you. We'll be okay. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. The message this morning is breaking barriers. Hallelujah. Yeah. Breaking barriers. Breaking barriers. That is our sermon this morning. In life, there are barriers that hinder us from doing what God has called us to do. There are barriers that limit us from fulfilling our mission. There are barriers that push us away from doing what God has called us to do. And this morning, by God's will, we are going to break every barrier that has hindered us from fulfilling our ministry. In the name of Jesus. And the scripture is so common and simple. We are talking about a Samaritan woman. I know you have heard of the two Samaritans. Hello? How many Samaritans do you know? There are two, eh? One is commonly known as the good what? Samaritan. You have heard of the good Samaritan many times. But now today, we are talking about the Samaritan woman. From the book of John chapter 4, we read here, maybe somebody can. Someone can read for us. Uh, verse number three and verse number four. Then you go down there at verse three, four. I'm just reading this, the whole of the chapter. That's what, well, that's our scripture today. So verse number three and four. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Hallelujah. He left Judea to go to Galilee, and he must pass through the city or the nation of Samaria. Hallelujah. This is Jesus. He has baptized. He has preached the word. Now he is going into Galilee to go and preach the word. But between Galilee and Judea, there is a village or there is a town of Samaria. Hallelujah. And this Samaria is not a friend of Judah. But Jesus has to break into this city so that the kingdom of God should reach them also. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So the word here says, and he must, that was a must. Many people when they were reaching Samaria, going to Galilee from Judea, they would try to pass into Capodia, Peria, and other places and round and go there. But Jesus was there to break the barrier so that the way the kingdom salvation may reach also the Samaritans. Hallelujah. Then he came to a city of Samaria, which was called Sitia, to the parcel of the ground that Jacob gave to his son. That's fine. Now Jacob's well was there, therefore being weary with his journey, sat on the wall at the sixth hour. There comes a woman of Samaria 
to draw water, just say to her, give me to drink. Hallelujah. So as Jesus had moved from uh, Judea to Galilee, it was a long way. He was faced, he was tired. And on his journey, he reached a well of Jacob. And as he went on that well, he sat down. It was around the sixth hour, which is 12 hours, 12 o'clock. And here comes a woman. Shout to me. Here comes a woman. A woman, one woman. And Jesus alone. For his disciples, the Bible says, they had gone into the city to buy some food and other things. But now, the woman comes and finds Jesus seated on the well. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> seated on the well. And as you are seated, the woman comes and Jesus says, give me water to drink. Hello? Give me water to drink. Then the woman said unto him, How is it that being a Jew, verse number 89, being a Jew, you have asked me, which I am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Hello? This one said, Why are you asking me for water? Why did you ask me to drink for a drink? You are a Jew. I am a Samaritan. And the Jews and the Samaritans have nothing in common. I cannot give you the water. Hello? There are people in our lives that we cannot talk to. There are some people in our lives that we, can, we neglect. There are people in our lives that we feel we have nothing to do with them. Hallelujah. We have put a barrier between them and us. And Jesus said to this woman, if only you knew who is talking to you, you would have asked of him to give you water. For the water that I give you, whoever drinks my water will never be thirst again. But this water you are drinking, you are thirst every day. Hallelujah. So there are people in our lives who need this living water. And we are the well who should provide for them. And Jesus is calling you and me to break the barrier that hinders us from doing God's work. Yes. Hallelujah. And the woman said, Sir, in the meantime, this woman was against. She was not able to say anything. But now she opened up and said, Give me the water to drink so that I will never come again to this world. Hallelujah. The people that we think cannot come to this church, God is waiting for us to reach them out. The people who are discouraged, it is our duty to go and strengthen them. The people who are we perceive to be, the people we perceive to hate, or the people that we hate, are our miracles. When we go to them, God will work a miracle in their lives. And God's power and anointing will overflow in our lives. And those people that hate us, South Gambia, those people, South Gambia, those people who hate us or who hate me, I am their light. You are their light. So there's nobody who hates and there's nobody who hates you. For you and me, we hate nobody and nobody hates us. Everyone is needed in the kingdom of God. Despite of color, 
whatever their situation, there are limitations in life which must be broken. And this woman said, give me the order to drink. She opened it up. May those people who need to come into this church open up in the name of Jesus. May those doors that have been closed open up in the name of Jesus. May the power and anointing of God overflow in our lives that we do the mission that God called us to do. And while Jesus was saying these words, he told her, before I give you this order, go and bring your husband. And the woman said, I don't have a husband. And just said, yes, you have said right. You have been married five times and the one you have the sixth one is not your husband. You have said the truth. And the woman said, I realize sir, that you are a prophet. I realize that you are the prophet whom we are waiting for. You are the prophet this city of Eden is waiting for. You are the prophet of this North Carolina is waiting for. You are the prophet this world is waiting for. Including Zambia is waiting for people like you. The two carpenters that you are seeing there, they were in my country for four years in Zambia. And they helped us to plant during their time of four years, we planted 14 churches. Hallelujah. Planted 14 churches. They are from the Baptist church. They are not church of God of prophecy. But they came to work with the church of God of prophecy in Zambia. And 14 churches were planted. The harvest is great out there. But it needs men and women who support the mission. It needs men and women who stand and go with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Like Jesus did to this Samaritan woman. And when this woman heard these words, she went to tell the whole village, come and see the man who has told me everything. Hallelujah. You are the man this world is waiting for. Young men, I'm so excited and glad. I know in this modern world, in the West, many of our members may be of our senior age like me. In the African setup, the church is full of young people. You are so blessed. You are a big blessing to me. Hallelujah. Come. Thank you. We need you. Come, 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 come. The church in Africa is full of this. Hello? The church in Africa is full of this. So, every nation, every place has got a barrier. The barrier that you have here are young people to come into the kingdom. Now we pray in the name of Jesus. May he touch the lives of young people. To come back to God. May He reconcile the families in the name of Jesus to come back. May the hearts of the fathers go to their children. And their children's hearts come back to their fathers. And obey God this way. Hallelujah. Because the harvest, we are going to heaven very soon. I was reading the, the song saying, We are going to heaven very soon. And none should remain. And now this woman said to Jesus, you are saying that we are going to worship in a, as you worship in the mountain. And you, you worship in Jerusalem. And just said, woman, I tell you now, the time has come when you shall not worship in this mountain. And when you shall not worship in Jerusalem. But the true worshippers shall worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. Time has now come for you not to say we are an American church. Time has now come for us not to say we are an African church. We are all the children of God who must worship God in the spirit and in truth. For that is what God is looking for. So there is no more barrier between the United States of America and Africa. We are the children of God. We need to work together, support one another, lift one another for the kingdom of God to be accomplished. You cannot do the kingdom alone. When we look into the statistics of the Church of God of Prophecy, you find that in North America, we have 94,000 members. In Africa, we have more than 300,000 members. 
But unfortunately, out of the 300,000 members in Africa, mostly are being supported by the 94,000 which is here. So God puts different needs and abilities. He has blessed you in one way, and he has blessed Africa in one way, and when we work together, the kingdom of God is feathered. Yeah. Hallelujah. He has given you resources, finances. Such a, a structure like this one in Africa, man, you say, you can find it. It's not easy to find it anyway. You, have, you will see some of the pictures there. People are worshipping where, when it is raining, when it is sunny, you cannot understand. Some are still in the trees even to this hour. But God has given them the heart to love God. So the hour has now come when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. So I encourage you, my brother and my sister, let us stand firm with the word of God without moving, without shaking, standing firm because we have got a word that God is going to give us through Christ Jesus. I encourage you, my senior citizens, Thank God I'm also becoming one of the senior citizens. Hallelujah. I started pastoring when I was 24 years. I was one of the youngest pastors in Zambia. 24 years. I'm now somewhere 60. Serving God. There's nothing better than serving God all the days of your life. There's nothing, there's no better reward you ever get. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, be unmovable in the work of the Lord, for your labors in the Lord are not in vain. Hallelujah. So I encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, stand firm, work together for the church to be strong. We need to carry on the vision that we are being taught. We need to work together. We need to sacrifice. Sacrifice means doing more than you are asked. We need to evangelize. And we need to love one another. Hallelujah. As a church, the hour has now come when his presence is ruling it's no longer in America, it's no longer in Africa, but it is in the children of God. So let us love one another, let us work together, let us worship our God in the spirit and in truth. And Jesus finally, they came, the disciples, they want to give him food to eat. And he refused to eat. And they started saying to one another, has somebody given him some food to eat? Has somebody given him some food to eat? In verse number 34, John chapter 4, verse 34, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Hallelujah. My meat, shout to me, my meat, shout to me, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. And to finish his work. That is your assignment. That is my assignment. Is to do the will of the Father through Christ Jesus, who called us and has assigned us to do his work and to finish. Never quit until the Lord calls you home. Never quit until the Lord comes. Hallelujah. For our that's our mission and our goal. There's nothing to say, there is no time to work, it is time to work. Therefore, I now declare every barrier in your life broken. Yes, I declare every barrier in your life broken. In the name of Jesus. I declare open doors upon your life in the name of Jesus. Every man of sicknesses and diseases, right now I command you out in the name of Jesus. I declare the presence, the power of God, the anointing of God upon every soul for the glory of God. Thank you, Father, for what you have done today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed in Jesus' name. We are saving the living God.
who does not lie and who does not fail. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. May God bless you all. Amen. At this point in time, you may need to see, to know a bit of what Zambia is. Zambia is in Central Africa. It has a population of about 18 million people. It is a Christian nation from 1991. It was declared a Christian nation in 1991, and it's a government in, in our constitution of Zambia that a Christianity is the acceptable number one religion in Zambia. People love God. The gospel is open to be preached. We are the first democratic country in Africa where a president is elected by popular vote. We have 73 tribes, but no civil war. In Africa, many countries, when they have such kind of tribes, there are always stripes and wars, but there's no civil war. People love God. We are one Zambia, one nation. Our motto is simple, one Zambia, one nation. The Church of God of Prophecy has got about 70 uh, branches with more than 6,000 members. And the, out of that, of course, we have some few challenges as every nation has got challenges. You have your own, we have our own. But together, it is possible to meet those challenges. Amen. Out of those 70 churches I'm talking about, only about 11 have got the church buildings. The rest are meeting in the grass sites, whatever, here and there. It's a big challenge in this era when the rains come and all those things. So the bishop has a big challenge because everybody in Africa, they look to the bishop. And can you imagine? Every pastor is looking to the bishop. And every member is looking for the, to the bishop to solve their problems. Help us to pray that may God break that barrier in Jesus' name. That's the barrier that we have us. So, so far, we are building our national headquarters church. I don't have an office as yet. The office of the church is still in my house. But we are working hard to put up the, uh, the church, the National Convention Center, and the Bishop's Office, which you are going to see shortly, I'm sure you see it here. In Africa, that's a standard building. I know here it's not the, it's not that, but to Africa it matters a lot. So we will need your prayers, your help, your finances, and everything that the Lord will tell you to do, because you and us are partners together. We are the Church of God of all prophecy. There's no church of God of prophecy America. There's no church of God of prophecy Africa. There's only church of God of all prophecy. So I'm so proud to belong to this family. And I'm so humbled that you are such a wonderful, great team of workers. So now I'm open to any question that you may want to ask. Yes, sir. Right, this is our, this is the National Church of Zambia. It is a, a 2,000 seater church. It is long, it goes behind me. It's about a 2,000 seater church. So, this building so far. Jenny, maybe you can give us, she's so independent, I don't want to speak. Come and speak one minute. Carpenter and um, she and her husband, as you heard the bishop say, spent four years uh, as missionary work. You didn't intend to be there four years. We just went for as long as God told us to stay.
Okay. And it been, ended up being four years. So she helps him a lot with communication. So God bless you. Yeah. Um, so just to tell you a bit about this building here, when um, God was laying on our heart uh, about Zambia, he um, had connected us with a letter there, and we prayed about it, and we went to Zambia. We met with Bishop, and he took us to this plot of land. This was in uh, 2012. This land here was completely uh, just bush, just grass, and God had given them this land in a very miraculous way that Bishop could share even many stories about how God worked. Uh, they paid less than half uh, for this land from what all the other people were bidding, but God uh, laid on the heart of the owner there to sell to him because of the church. Um, and he asked us to pray that God would allow this uh, vision to come uh, to reality. He was praying about a, um, a, a center, a multi-purpose hall that could be used uh, to train pastors and leaders in Zambia uh, that they could come together. This, this particular building is on uh, a very well-traveled road. And um, in fact, Bishop mentioned from Cape to Cairo. From Cape Town to Cairo. So South this Africa is, to Egypt. This is an artery through Zambia. Even um, if visitors come as tourists and they land in the airport and they want to go see the Great Victoria Falls, they will go past this uh, church headquarters here. And so God did an amazing thing. And as you can see, uh, he's building this this place and this has been years and years they would put up uh, just some small uh, starting of the structure and some uh, bricks and and then they had a terrible storm and it blew it down it was very discouraging for all of us bishop and daniel and i we uh, cried together over that discouragement but god continued to provide and uh, restructure so that they could build in stages instead of building one large building to build uh, in portions. So as the money would come, they could add. Uh, so now, uh, this is, this the way it looks now is not even the way it looks when we left. It was uh, where this uh, palm tree was, this was still open. The one behind, I don't know if you have those other photos uh, available, but there's um, a portion behind, and we were meeting there uh, with just tarps on the walls. And so, God has done an amazing thing. Um, now, there's Mama Lydia up at the podium there. Um, yeah, this is uh, back in time, this is before. So, anyway, um, but the, the vision maybe you can share about the multi multicultural. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so he's her, her accent is so easy for you to understand. So she has everything like that. Um, so this is for the Church of God of Prophecy to train their pastors and leaders and to have large groups, big Sundays, where people come and because of transport, it's an easy place to reach. Um, but in addition to that, he is renting this property out to other churches and other organizations that need a large facility. So it's a way to allow God to work even in other uh, groups, but also to provide some resources to continue to build. Um, and, and his prayer is that one day there will also be a school there for the disadvantaged children. There are children that um, that can't even go to school, that officially the school is free, but you have to have a uniform and you have to have supplies. And for some, that is even impossible. Uh, so like when we were there, we, we would help um, with, maybe we would buy, pay some tuition and they, they would buy a uniform or we would be able to help in those ways, partnering together. So his mission is to help reach those that are struggling. And um, 
So it, it's a way to do many things with one facility, and that's, that's what he's working toward, and that's what God laid on his heart. And you can see that God is working, but they have more to complete. Well, yes. if, I could, well if I could add something, uh, a lot of the churches, uh, he has urban churches, but a lot of them are rural churches. So having a place to come together as kind of a, a, a place to assemble is maybe more important than churches here in the U.S., and coming together as a group. So uh, it, it's, it's extra important in that environment. Well, and as Daniel said, um, it also, having an indoor space is very important during the rainy season because for many months you will have, uh, if the rains come on Sunday, so many people can't manage to get there uh, because everyone is walking on foot. There are maybe at most four or five vehicles at the church, everyone else is walking. Um, and so if it's pouring down rain, uh, the roads get muddy and, and they can't come. So um, having a place where they can be and uh, get inside and not be under the rain, uh, it also helps with uh, just attendance and connection that way. Thank you, Jen. No, that's your mic. I have mine. <laughs> um, I have my main thing in the United States, so I have my own mind. Yeah, I think that was okay, so she has explained some issues, some few things that are happening there. So, oh, I'm going to let the other, the other uh, pictures roll while he's speaking. Okay, that, that's one of our churches. Oh, of course, that's the, that, that, that church, the big one, which is before, all that people are meeting in the big Sundays. That is inside the church before it was uh, that label, that's the church. And this is one of our churches also. Of course, that is the one now, the very one which we, we are in. This is part of our transport that we use when we go for ministry, including these canoes. These are children uh, ministries, children ministries. Very, very, very happy that that's their house where they stay. Children ministries continues. A big man is getting saved, receiving Jesus as personal savior. One of our strong workers in the church, to the ministry. When you come to visit, you have these animals waiting for you. <laughs> and say it. Elephants, say it's a home of elephants, lions, all the big five. That's one of our churches. The shoe boxes from Big Graham. What you call Christmas box? Oh, yeah. They also reach us. That is the great mind Victoria Falls. When you come to Africa, if you don't reach there, you have not reached the Africa. <laughs> so they are, they are our friends there. You can see them. <laughs> Bishop and the carpenters, and my two, two children on the sides. My mama bishop seated there with a friend. Uh, the children ministry outside the, one of our churches. Yes, they are in the church now. They are singing and praising God. Uh, Daniel is preaching, the interpreter is interpreting. And Daniel, Jennifer, and me there, we are evangelizing. It's uh, in the church there. This is a church in one of the rural areas in Western province, more than 600 Ks from where I stay. That is the church in the tent. This is the mode of transport we are trained to have to carry our people and materials. This is the common one to carry more people. And that's the board for missionary work. And in the church, children are singing. 
If I excited, well, you have the bubble, bubble tree when you want, you can teach, it's a nice fruit in the church. I don't know this gentleman, I've not seen him, I'm seeing him here. <laughs> that is to show you a church of God of Prophecy. I'm sure you have the flag. Is it here? Yeah. So, to the ministries, uh, the gentleman and his wife, his, his lovely wife. So, you love one another. You should love your wives and love your husbands. Then, our friends now supporting the carpenters, them, they too, are buying a boat for the church to use for missionary work. We supply also Bibles, we give Bibles to especially new, new church, church plants. In, in Africa, a Bible is very rare to buy, to find, and it's very expensive. It's how many dollars, Ten. Uh, ten like ten, twelve dollars. Ten, twelve dollars. So 90% of members in the church don't have Bibles. So out of that 30,000, 300,000 members, only 30,000 have got Bibles, the rest don't have. So this is part of Kapio town where we stay. It's a steel plant. The sky is the same. We have the sky there like that. And the mountains. This is like North Carolina. <laughs> This is our main road. It's the only main road. The whole country. That's the only tag road, major tag road. The rest are all crap. It's a small shop in a small town, small town there. That's our town where we buy our accessories. There we go. They are just waiting on the water line. Those are pipes for the water line to the city of Osaka. Evangelism on the road. That is the church, the very church on the side. Well, that is our small town again. Small town, small town. Our small town. Jennifer loved this place. That's a Hindu church. There's a Hindu church there. Witnessing and sharing to the young people there. This is a market where you can buy some of it. When you come home, and when you come to Zanga, this will eat. There's some food there, you can see. There we go, small town, small town. We are moving now out of town, out of town. We are moving still. That's our clinic there at the floor now. Where the carpenters were staying, you can see the roads. Yeah, keep moving. That's how we carry some of their goods in small cars. The soup plant has given a bit of employment in the in, in the city. Uh, in Zambia, unemployment is eighty percent, and more than. A, 80% of people live under one dollar a day. Out of the population of 18 million, 80% live under one dollar a day, a family of six. So go there, the market, main market in the estates. They still plant it so much because that's the only company that offers employment in the area. The carpenters are driving a missionary vehicle which they had. And we move on, that's the junction. You see in the church there, one of our churches, receiving the Samaritan case. So they reach, when you, when you send your box, it reaches Africa. Women are very excited, and that's how after we connected with some of them. Very, very happy. They are still rejoicing, they are being taught, and they are able to do wonderful things. 
who, who cannot be happy with the present. Though it's more, it's more blessed to give than to receive. There we go, the children, the children, the, the church in Africa, as I said, is very is young. So it is time to build the young people to grow. The carpenters and the mission team, many people, 80% of people live in such kind of houses. This is in church. Daniel is preaching with the big man there. Mr. Zambia, when, when, they, when they came to Zambia, in Zambia, God blessed them with a son who is called Zambia, like the guy we saw there. We eat a bit of fish there, and you can fish from the streams. This is more transport. Here you run in order, in order to exercise. You run to exercise. As we run to reach fast, transport is very <laughs> What a contrast. You run to exercise. We run to reach fast. <laughs> okay, that's the church. Well, Steve, you can see the, how much work has been done. That is the inside there, the road, the road, the road. Okay. The grip work is very strong. After we lost the steel, we had to put in the, the cement one. This part of the congregation now it looks like our evangelist and the counterpart, the bishop and mama. You can enjoy it when you are visiting there. We have robust seas and the, the, uh, the hippos are there. The missionary journey now, that is Jennifer and the team going to be in the bush more than, more than uh, 10 miles walking. Okay. So this church needs about 10,000 to finish it, to have the doors, the windows, the floors, and the plasters, and all those things. Hallelujah. Yeah. Tony, you have a video that the bishop wanted to show off, I You are so good to us. We appreciate you. We love you. Just have a keyboard. We are still praying and believing God in for the whole equipment. So in Africa, you simply have to make the drum, get a, the the ox, uh, the, the cow skin, make drums, play the tamlins. We just make it from glass and you, from grass, and then you make something like that. That's the music we are getting there. Amen. So may God bless you. I'm so thankful that you have given me this opportunity and time to be here. Bless you. Give them a cheer. When I, when I saw the picture of the building they were working on, uh, we had lunch the other day. When I saw that building with no windows and no doors, I said, oh, you have solar heat and flow through ventilation. <laughs> uh, he wants more than that. Um, they have plumbing, they have electric, they have everything but doors, windows, and floors, Scott. 
I said, well, that's smart because you really don't want floors before you have doors and windows. So I asked him, I said, well, Bishop, how much do you think it would take to complete? He said, we have estimates, about $10,000 to complete that building. And uh, that's a lot of money where he's from. That's not a tremendous amount of money in America. It is to probably any one of us. But people working together, not just us, but others working together, I believe God will supply that need. I believe there's a barrier between uh, them completing that building and, and, and uh, having it done. There's, there's something in the way. That, you know what I think it is? I think it's $10,000. And I'm going to agree with the bishop that uh, all barriers are going to be broken down. And so uh, as you give today, we will worship the Lord in our giving when we leave. If you want to make a donation, just write Zambia on your offering uh, or on your check or on your envelope. And, and we will make sure it gets to the right place. And then Sister Glenna is going to put in the bulletin uh, to remind people if they want to give. Uh, Bishop, we're going to be asking people to give throughout the month. Yes. And then we'll wait about a month or so, and we'll, our uh, treasurer will send it in with her report. Amen. So did you enjoy the bishop today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We appreciate you being This is an honor for us, sir. It is an honor. Uh, bishop Davis, our state bishop, called me when they were at the assembly and said, uh, Bishop from Zambia is going to be here, and he has friends somewhere in Rockingham County. He said, have you ever heard of Stoneville? <laughs> I said, Stoneville? I said, yes. He, he said, do you know where it is? I said, I think I can find it. And so I was just thrilled uh, to have him, and, and it's just such an honor, sir. And, and I know that, that uh, he would appreciate any financial support. No amount is too small. No amount is too large. But, but most of all, I believe the bishop would appreciate your prayers for the people of Zambia and for him as well. So would you stand? You bow your heads, let me pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you very much for this dear bishop. We thank you, Lord, for the word that he's shared. Break barriers in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, help us, Lord, to fulfill our mission. For your glory, Jesus, we pray for the people of Zambia. Lord, we pray that you would touch our hearts, that we would yes, care Lord. about them. We thank you because we believe they love us and care about us. That's the way your kingdom works, Jesus. And so, Lord, we pray your blessings. We, we pray for their financial needs. We just trust you to supply. Do it, Lord, for your glory. Lord, go before us. Work through us, Jesus. Bless us in such a way, Lord, that it, we live our lives, Lord, so that it makes it easier for others to believe in Jesus, not more difficult. Help us to be kind, dear Jesus. Help us to be known by the love we have one to another. Thank you for blessing us. Lord, we have worshipped you in our singing, in our praying, in the word, and in just sharing time together. We worshipped you. And now as we leave, we worship you in our giving. Bless us, Lord, as we give. Do all these things because of who you are, because you love us. And we'll say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let the church say amen. God